That's the way. It's up to you. If you want to walk him down, just put your hands up tight and walk straight to him. He can't do shit. It's too much weight, too much strength. Break him down. Stewart's pretty confident in there, Roy. Yeah, but you never should underestimate a puncher such as Tommy Morrison. I wouldn't try to walk him down. I would sit there and box him just like Nelson's doing. Keep him off balance with the jab and just peck him until you set up a big shot. If you've been as successful as Lewis has been up to this point, why would you change it? Why wouldn't you just wait for the big one to come to you? It's almost like backing a cat into the corner if you put your hands up and walk him down. You're going to make him fight him much harder than he is doing right now. Yeah. There's a right hand by Morrison. He's got a mouse under his left eye, but he's starting to connect more and more frequently with those right hands as he steps inside. Body shot landed, uppercut partially blocked by Morrison. Lewis short with the right hand. Stands to reason that if Lewis listens to Stewart and elects to walk on in, he's going to give Morrison more opportunities. That's what I just said. It's almost going to be like backing a cat into a corner and making him have to fight. If you force Morrison to fight, you're going to get caught with some big sharp punches because he throws powerful sharp punches. Tommy taking punishment off the jab. More and more, it looks like Morrison was correct when he said there was no way he could outbox Lennox Lewis. Yes, and I said that at the top because if Lennox uses this jab like he's doing, then there's no chance of Morrison outboxing him. He should work on trying to counter that jab. All right. oh. Lewis reaches forward and grabs Morrison. The Milton Slane gets him at, at the distance again, and Lewis landed a right hand. The crowd booed that move that Lennox made, but that was a smart move. Morrison had got just about in his own punching range, and Lennox was not in his punching range, so he grabbed him. Kind of ring awareness Lewis has not always shown in his career. You put this talent together with real knowledge, and you've really got something, but that's always been the case. Another thing I see here, Lennox jab is starting to feel, look like it's falling slightly. If it falls, he'll have to be very careful after it comes back. It's falling on the way back. If it falls, he'll have to be very careful of that right hand right there. And that's what Tommy just tried to do, countering over the jab with the right hand. I want to step back. Let's step back clean. Here we go. Come on. Lewis landing more punches. Morrison maybe landing the harder shots, although there was another hard left hook by Lennox Lewis. He's never been noted as a left hooker. It's been his most effective blow tonight. Blood from the right eye of Morrison again after that left hook by Lewis. Morrison stepping in with the right. And lands a chopping right as the round comes to a close. Coincidence, Morrison seems to tire automatically at the end of four rounds. His trainer, Tommy Virgut, says to all intents and purposes, he's never won a fifth round in his career. And as the graphic showed you, his punch output normally goes way down in this stanza. It happened again earlier this summer against Razor Rudder. Both of these fighters are very tired. The only thing is that Morrison is starting to swell and it's going to start, his eyes are starting to swell and this should start affecting his vision soon. So if he's going to make a move, he has to start making it now. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored so far? Jim, four rounds to nothing, 40 to 35, Lennox Lewis. I gave Lennox all four rounds. Certainly he deserves an extra point in round two for the knockdown. Lennox has shown me a great left jab, real, real good defense. Tommy's not getting through, and I think Vergetz is killing Mars and Royal at Vaseline. It's going in his eye, can't see the punches coming. And right now, Lewis is landing combinations at will. When Morrison comes forward, Lennox simply jabs and then drops the right hand over. He's been very effective in the first minute of this round. Two things I see. One thing is that Morrison knows that the fifth round is not a good round for him. He's letting this mental thing get to him. The second thing is that Lennox is not hitting Morrison's body. If he touches body, he will knock him out. But Morrison is trying to fight Lewis the way he fought George Foreman, staying in outside his range and then trying to fight and get inside in his own terms. But Lewis is just much faster than George. 
So he's having a real difficult time executing that plan. And not only that, if you stay out of Lennox's range and he has the longest arms, then that means you're that much further out of your own range. Morrison landed a left hook after Lewis's right hand, so both men did damage there. But Tommy Morrison is battered around both eyes and appears to be losing his vision as time goes on. Yes, but look at the facial expression. Morrison has almost an I give up facial expression. Lennox has an I'm about to take over now expression on his face. These things are, have a, a play a big role in a boxing ring because when you see a guy with the I give look, it gives you more confidence, gives you energy sometimes that you don't even have to want to get him out. Under a minute in round number four. Or check it, round number five, I should say. As has been the pattern throughout his career, Morrison has been largely dominated in this fifth round by Lewis. All those punches were blocked by Lennox Lewis's arms. And there's a monumental uppercut. Morrison went to one knee. Lane calls it a knockdown, correctly so. Morrison knew it. He went immediately to the neutral corner. And that right eye is looking pretty bad. This fight is basically over. Like I told you before, Morrison has that I give up look on him. Lennox knows it. Lennox is just going to keep coming. Lennox has done his homework on Morrison. He knows every combination that Morrison throws, and they're insane. So he cannot hit Lennox. Round five ends. Lennox Lewis, to this moment in the fight, has looked better than at any time in his career uh, since Halloween night 1992 when he clocked Ruddock in the second uh, round. How's your eye? Come on. I got this one. Uh -huh. I got the left one. All right. Give him a round, Bob. Give him yeah, a round. Oh, yeah, we're going to give him a round. Yeah. We just want to see how bad it is. Okay. Tommy, Tommy, listen to what I'm going to tell you now. You have got to take him into a war this round. Okay. All right? There's no more. We're not going to win by points on this. We're down. You got to get low. You got to stalk him. You got to take him into a war. Okay? Nice, tight, low, controlled combination. He's thrown a lot of long right hands, Lewis, in this fight, as we've often seen him. But it's that short one that Tommy Morrison didn't see that put him down. Like I said, Lennox has done his homework on Morrison. He's using some of Morrison's own combinations on him. That's Morrison's favorite combination that he dropped him with just then. Tommy, Tommy, take some, Tommy take some of this grease off. Morrison's trainer sounds like he might stop the fight himself the unless Morrison can do some serious damage in this off. round. Yes, right, right, he asked the doctor okay, to give time, him one more round when the doctor wasn't even thinking of it at that point. Yes, but he can sense the urgency on Morrison's face. Morrison has basically almost given up in this fight. He wants to go out and see can he land a big shot now. Oh, that's a terrific right hand shot by Lewis. That landed flush on Morrison's chin. Very flush. But let, Morrison just wants a chance to try for one more knockout. Then I think he knows that he's basically outclassed by Lewis. He'll make a statement here anytime. In pleading his own case, you might have heard Morrison say to the doctor, I've still got my left hook. By way of saying, listen, don't stop this thing too fast. I'm dangerous. But the left hook has not been a factor so far. Down goes Morrison again, and this is becoming a blowout. Morrison is too Six, concer concerned about his seven, eye. He's letting his eye take him out okay. of the fight. Third knocked out of the night for Lewis. And Lennox begins to showboat just a little bit. Now he comes back to the jab, popping it and bringing it back the way you're supposed to. This is the round that Morrison stopped running after taking a terrible beating. Lane's getting very close to a stoppage here. You get that sense. Down goes Morrison again, and I wonder if Mills has seen it up. There is no three knockdown rule in effect. That's the fourth knockdown of the fight, and that'll do it. A terrific performance by Lennox Lewis. Defensively, he kept that right hand up so that he completely neutralized Tommy Morrison's outstanding left hook. His jab was harder than we've seen it before, more purposeful. He fought a perfect fight for Lennox Lewis. Emmanuel Stewart has been saying for the past few months, there isn't a heavyweight on the planet who could last eight rounds with Lennox Lewis. Now that obviously has a touch of hype in it. Well, it has a touch, 
But the hype that it has is to give other heavyweights the message that he is willing to challenge anybody to go. And that's a sign of a great champion. Had Lennox fought Riddick Bowe back when both of them were champions, I think one of those guys would be the world heavyweight champion right now today. Yes, the uh, unchallenged king of the division. That should have happened in early 1993. For a variety of reasons, it didn't. Now, let's take a look at the first of the two knockdowns in this round. Roy Jones. Lennox, like I said, has seen since the, the, since the uh, feeling of urgency on the face of Marston, so he know all he had to do was hit him. This first one, that's the jab that really did the damage. That shows you how weak mentally and physically Marston was. It's another look at the first knockdown, and the jab bothered him there. You can see that Morrison was concerned about his eyes at this point, and once again, you'll see the jab do the damage there, followed by the finishing right hand that put him on the canvas. Now here's knockdown number two, Roy. Knockdown number two is almost the same thing I did to Pat Zinza. He let Morrison punch till he had him tied. Morrison thought he could walk out of an exchange, but he couldn't. He wasn't out of the range of Lennox. Because Lennox got closer to him, he was used to backing up and being out of range. We'll see right there. He wasn't out of range. And how effective was that left hook tonight? Aside from one damaging left hook against Bruno in Cardiff a couple of years ago, Lennox has never been known for that punch. But he landed a dozen he's good coming, left hooks coming, in this fight. Like I told you, I can tell somebody he's watching the Roy somewhere, Jones video. Somebody <laughs> somewhere has been watching some Roy Jones tapes. <laughs> When you throw it right, what a dramatically effective punch it is. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. KO victory is March to regain the heavyweight championship continues. The winner, former heavyweight champion.